Welcome to Painting Our Monsters. This is the second part of an episode where we're going to focus just on painting this monster. So the first thing we're going to do is put in piece for his body to represent where he is. This monster is, uh, I'm thinking of him as zebra mussels. He's made of invasive species gone wrong. So each one of these blobs is just going to be a different muscle, and we're going to kind of stack those up and layer them up and build them on top of each other to give him a kind of a spooky form. So right now this is just purple paint mixed with water, and uh, all I'm doing is just laying in where are the first forms of his body going to be. I'm not too worried about detail yet. I'm not too worried about um, light or anything like that. I'm just kind of worried thinking, okay, what what is blocking out the background? What it, can we not see through? And so I'm just putting in these jabs of purple, making this guy big and heavy. And we'll come in and add more detail later. So now I kind of have a, a bit of a shape to him where I see a body coming out of the water. I see a torso. I see two appendages that, you know, a human might see as arms, but obviously is going to be different to a beast like this. But now I'm just kind of adding on those, giving him some branches, giving him what, where it could be a head. And just thinking, how does this guy function out here? I think that for him to really be effective, he's going to need a kind of a zebra muscle at the very top of him. One of the funnest things about painting monsters is deciding how much like a human do you want them to look. They can have one eye, they could have no eyes, they could have a head or no head. So I decided to give him a sort of a zebra muscle at the top. Um, and so now we're going to come in and just put in a little bit of, little bit of detail. So I'm using black to separate these purple zebra muscles from each other, as well as to give them some straps. Uh, the zebra mussels you might find in lakes near you often have these stripes, like a zebra, of course. And so we're, we're using those, and we're just trying to use this color to create a little bit of separation in there. Turn these blobs into individual shapes. This is why when you're first putting in color, it doesn't really matter so much. You don't need to worry about getting it all right, because you're going to come back in and use lines and details later to create the illusion you're going for. So you can see now with every one of these black lines, he's just getting a little bit more form. And I'm not I'm not worried about getting them all right. And the first time, I'm, this is all just wet paint coming on top of wet paint. So I'm just paying attention to how it's sliding off my brush and how it's all fitting together. I know I'm going to have to come in and do some highlights later. So all this stuff doesn't matter too much right now. We're just kind of putting in our shapes, putting in some, some vague outlines. I am intimidated by that head, so I saved that for the end. Because um, that's that's the important part. If you're going to put a face on your monster, or, you know, people are going to that's what people are going to look at. They're going to say, "How's this monster think? How's this monster navigate the world?" So I, I did save that for last, and I'm trying to give them some shape now. And I used a lot of black here because I know I can come back and put in purple, but I want that I want that shape of it. I want him to kind of look like he could take a chomp out of you. So now I'm just looking and thinking, okay, where? Where do we need a little bit more indication? Where do we need a little bit more separation on this monster? This is a great one for you to practice at home because it's just one color, purple, with a little bit of black, and then I'm going to use a little bit of silver here in a minute. And by just focusing on one color, or in, in a dark and a highlight, you can get all the sort of texture and three-dimensionality you need. So now this is that silver I was talking about, so I'm coming in here, going at the top of him, and thinking where does this galactic this galactic light source illuminate him now it's going to be on the top all right the top of all these shells and i'm thinking okay every one of these shells has a ridge every one of these shells has a top so we can go in and put him where we want we want to use we don't want his head to be the darkest part of his body cuz it's the the highest up so we're going to come in and use that silver on his head to accentuate that jaw and it's gonna look better because there's that darkness in the background so when we have that light playing against the dark that's where we start to get some some fun stuff happening so I'm just coming in and you can see some of that black is just going completely away I'm completely covering that up and that's okay it's painting is so much of it is a process and it's about going back and putting in putting in a first layer then going back and putting in a second layer and adding to it and you can do that you can let your painting dry and do that in different steps that gives you a lot of control or you can do it all at once and and just put in those different layers of, of wet on top of wet it's a lot of fun to work this way because you get to see the the painting grow right before your eyes now I know we 
we got to bring out that mouth, right? I want the inside of that mouth to be dark and the outside to just be catching the light. So that's what I'm doing now. You can see I put in a little bit more dark there to give it a little bit more shape. His head is getting where I want it, but it's not quite there yet. So we just got to take our time, take a look at it, and decide what is it going to need. I think his jaw needs a little bit of work. What's in front and what's behind? That's a question. And now we know. Now, okay. Now his we can kind of see if he belly flopped down in the water, you could see his bottom jaw would hit the water and that top jaw might stay dry. So those sort of little details can really go a long way in making it making things look, you know, three-dimensional and real as like as you saw him. Now he is a little bit, maybe a little bit too much of a kind of a human shape, so I'm just going in and putting in a couple little blobs of purple here and there to show these other little zebra mussels growing off of him. The, the dangerous thing about zebra mussels is they just pro proliferate at such a rapid rate that they'll just fill a whole lake, so I imagine this fella's the same. He's probably got lots of these little guys growing all over him, ready to fall off. If you were to shoot a rocket at him or try to... I don't know, take a couple of pot shots, you'd probably knock some of these zebra mussels square off, and those would fall into the water and start spreading through, start reproducing, procreating. So before too long, this whole river would just be filled with these things. And so I think putting in these little details kind of kind of gives us an indication of that. Over there, he kind of looks like he's got two arms. So I'm, I'm separating. I like that he's got two arms, but I don't want it to be too much like what we're, we're accustomed to. So I'm giving him a couple little little globs on that hand. Over here, we're giving a little branch over there, thinking, oh, you know, maybe this isn't his only form. Maybe if, if this fella decides to move, you know, it'd be these, these things are moving past each other, reforming. It's not exactly two arms as much as it is his two current arms. You know, these are kind of, kind of fellas that could be real, real dangerous. Now you notice I got a little bit too wet, so that's that paint's dripping down there. And you can see it just takes away the separation of that part of the paint. So that's something we're going to have to come back and fix in there. He's starting to get pretty close to where I want him. I really like the difference in, you know, just the, the white and the black. But now it's that time to work on that head. So we're putting in some more purple. I, I like where his jaw is, that white jaw, so I'm just doing my best to keep away from that. We want to we wanna keep that line intact. Sometimes all it takes in a painting is one line to make you believe it, okay? So again, I'm now I'm coming in there and I'm leaving the middle of it dark, so now it kind of looks like that we can see the inside of his mouth almost, right? It's like a, you wouldn't want to get swallowed by this guy. <laughs> this guy came out of here, you were fishing in the morning and this guy rose up out of the boat. Ooh, you would not want to be swallowed by him, right? Zebra mussels are a pain enough as they are, but if this guy came up after you, hoo, 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 that would be a problem. So now I'm thinking, hmm, is he looking about right? I, I, I'm liking his arms. I'm liking where he is uh, in the painting, but maybe we need a little bit more detail. Maybe we need something to, to make it look like he's... He's a, he's a creature. I don't want people to think that he's like a statue. I want them to feel the feel the presence of this guy. So by putting in a, a tongue, we all know what tongues are. We know how tongues move. So that that puts this that makes this painting a moment instead of a place. This is the moment where zebra mussels opened his opened his mouth and maybe he's reaching up for maybe he's hoping it's going to rain. Maybe he's maybe he's feeding off that starlight. And we're just giving him a tongue, and we're making it branch the way them filter feeders kind of do. Now, I think he's a little bit more fearsome than a regular filter feeder, but still, we're going to make his tongue kind of match that pattern, where it's got all these little all these little tendrils going every which way, reaching up into that, that galactic cluster. You notice I have a darker red in the background, and so uh, I do want to keep that red real bright. Also, I think if we keep it real bright, the painting is pretty muted, so if we keep that, that bright red... Well, that's going to draw the eye right there. People are going to say, what is going on? And, of course, that's what we really want. We want people to see these things and just wonder, what is happening over here? Um, I, for that, you can see I'm using a real fine brush. And when I, when I put it in the paint, I roll it back and forth so it comes out to a real nice tip. This is a time you want to work with, again, with water, uh, thinning down your acrylic paint so it'll just flow real nice into these tiny little tips. 
This can be the most satisfying part of doing the whole painting, but it can also be the most challenging because these little details, you know, they really do make a difference. So just take your time with this, and when you're doing these details, focus on the contrast. So I like that this tongue is up in front of this galaxy because you, you know, you can see that it's different than that, right? Now here, it's kind of, maybe it's hard to tell, but I'm, I'm putting a little bit of a branch through there, okay? Now, I had a drip, so I caught it with a dry brush, but I'm putting a little bit of a branch at the base of the tongue so it looks like, oh, that tongue is going behind the jaw. It's coming from inside his mouth. All right, the last thing we need to do to get this monster to fit in the landscape is to just put him in the water. So we're just adding a little bit of blue and a little bit of black just to give us a sense of a shadow. It doesn't really matter how you do it. It just matters that you put some indication here that he's interacting with this landscape. Now, if you enjoyed this painting and you'd like to see how I did the trees and how I'm going to finish it off with a foreground, well, go ahead and check out my channel because this is part two of a, of a two-part episode. And so I split it up so you can see the whole landscape uh, all by itself where we just go through the trees and then the foreground. We're going to put in some trees to send him way back. Um, so if you're interested in that, do check out my channel. Go ahead and subscribe. Give me a like button. Tell me what you think. And uh, right now we're just finishing up with him. We're just letting our, our, our brains see a form here underneath the water. We're making it look like uh, there's a more to this beast than, than meets the eye. And that's a fun part of these paintings is making sure these monsters fit in the landscape. Um, he's, he's a real fearsome guy and we're going to go through and when we add in those other details, we're going to put some of his little zebra muscles all over that landscape. Sometimes I like to put a fence or a little bit of trash, but I think today you're going to see me just add a whole bunch of little little zebra muscles all over. So I, ho I, ho I hope you like that, and I hope you check it out. And uh, until next time, remember, our world is what we make it.